I'm Damon Zhao, and it's time for your Eve Echoes Weekly News Update, where we'll be diving into all the happenings of the week. But first, if you can tag that subscribe button and ring that bell, then you too can stay up to date with everything that this channel has to offer. All right, there's one clarification from a story that we did last week where Pantheon hit the intimescent belts of Void Space. Apparently, there was more to the story. Pantheon beat back the Void Defense Fleet. However, they did reship and give chase while they were leaving. The Hero Dictors bubbled several of the fleet's ships and melted a few battleships. Pantheon were going to bring reinforcements. However, a Void Bubble 200 km off the gate prevented this. After these kills, both fleets did return home. Now for a update on my son and the journey that you all have joined me with these last 56 days. Last Tuesday, my son did come home. Finally, his 56th day in the NICU has ended and we are thrilled to have him home. It is a little bit of adjustment having a newborn back in the house again, but we are loving every second of it. My wife and I wanted to thank the community for the generous outpouring of support these last few weeks on this journey and the private and public messages I've been getting has been overwhelming. No matter what happens in the game, it is a joy to see the entire community rally behind something. And I really appreciate everything everyone has said to us. Um, it was a very stressful time, uh, but moving forward, everything's look great. He's doing wonderful. He is on an apnea monitor for the next four weeks, but uh, he's doing fantastic. Keeping us from sleep, yes, but wouldn't change anything about it. So once again, thank you everyone who sent me messages, uh, talked to me on voice chat, just the community at large itself. And also another milestone for the channel, we have hit the big 3K. That's right, back when I started this channel at launch, I never thought this channel would get as big as it is. Never thought y'all would want to hear me drone on and on about everything that goes on in the game. It is a lot of work and I really do enjoy it. I especially love seeing everyone's comments uh, on each of the videos and I can guarantee that I will be around for a very long time bringing you the news that I'm able to find. All right, we have the April 7th patch notes for this coming maintenance tonight. Let's see what they're going to be doing. First things, they have raised the maximum player limit of null sex systems from 800 to 1000. Yes, that allows more people to be in for these big fights. However, that does nothing to prevent the lag from these big fights. Two, players can no longer create characters using an emulator. I'm not sure, but it looks like they are starting to crack down on those players using emulators, such as Nox, Boostacks. Now, I'm pretty sure the only workaround for this would be opening up the game on your phone, creating a new character that way, and then just reloading it into the emulator. The search history for each system is now saved locally on the client. They have updated the ship info screen. They have added a ship comparison feature in the ship tree. Now that's a nice quality of life feature right there. I don't know how many times I've had to go on the tree itself, look at one ship, remember jump onto another ship on the tree. It's just one of those things that makes things a little bit faster. They updated the ship tree to allow ship filtering. All right, they tweaked management permissions. Number seven, players in the executor corporation with alliance management permissions will now be notified when a corporation applies to join the alliance or leaves it. When a corporation is removed from the alliance, all players in that corporation will be notified. Number eight, they have updated the estimated prices according to current market transaction records. Now, that should be a guarantee. They should do this every week, regardless if there's new things coming into the game or not. Every week, these prices need to be updated. Number nine, quality of life. Patch notes will no longer pop up once you have read them until new patch notes are released. 
Number 10. Out of the ore compression feature and the ore compression skills, now players can compress ore at a capsular outpost and the corporation citadel. Now, I'll be giving more information on that after we go over these patch notes. They have added notifications for certain operations while flying in a capsule. For the life of me, I don't know what that could possibly be. I don't know. Maybe something like, you've hit a bubble. You are entering low sec. I don't know. 12. Added info about viewing blueprints to the tips. 13. After completing an encounter mission, if there are items the mission offers, you will receive an extra notification reminding you to claim the items at the destination. Number 14. Tapping the balance update notice will now direct you to the corporation wallet interface. And last but not least, number 15. When selecting items to reprocess, the reprocessing interface will now pop up. Now, always when there's patches, there's always bugs to be fixed, and it looks like they have fixed three that they are claiming. First, they fixed an issue where the security rating of some systems was incorrectly displayed. That's especially meaningful, especially if you're hunting people in low-sec. Number two, fixed an issue where kill mills would not load in certain cases. Maybe those cases being, I don't know, 130 people on that kill mill? Number three, fixed an issue where you would incorrectly directed to another skin when tapping the Maelstrom Dawn skin in the New Eden store. All right, let's go over that new information about the compression of the ores. Joseph tells us that they are releasing it after this maintenance. Now, there are details to this. 100 ordinary ore can be compressed into one compressed ore, whereas rich ores, 10 of them can be compressed into one compressed ore. They are also releasing ore compression skills, basic, advanced, and expert. This will require tech level five. Now these skills, these ore compression skills, will allow fuel consumption to be reduced depending on the level they have. Basic, fuel consumption reduced by 5% per level. Advanced, fuel consumption reduced by 3% per level. And expert, fuel consumption reduced by 2% per level. When all said and done, fuel compression will allow for consumption to be reduced by around 50% after maxing out all of these skills. Now on this chart itself is the list of the ores as well as the gigajoules for compression. The number on the right is the required base energy for compression. Also, this week in the content creator section, we were treated to a preview of what scanning will be. Now, by no measure, these are not finalized whatsoever. They just wanted to give us a small preview. In the first image, we are seeing what looks like two scanning icons, one blue, one red. My guess is one could be for anomalies, one could be for PvP or player scanning. Now, unlike EVE Online, this will not be using probes. Instead, it looks like it's favoring a wavelength sort of uh, scanning, where you will have to hone in on the wavelength onto what you are scanning. And of course, the higher your skills, the tighter the wavelength scan. I, for one, am happy that they will not be using probes, as I can remember from EVE Online, it was a nightmare. You had to use six probes to get the perfect three-dimensional form, and you had to keep moving them around the, the map, you know, tightening them in. It, it's just, it, I don't see how it could be done on mobile. It would just take too much time. This does get me a little excited for the scanning. I just, I really would like more information as to exactly what we're going to be scanning. Uh, what are the anomalies that we're going to be scanning? Are, how are they going to differ from the regular anomalies that are in the game now? When will wormholes be able to come out? Yes, they are in the game already. And previously you were able to see them on the map until they fixed that. But when will they be opening those wormholes up so that we can access them? That is the 24 million isk question. And I, I know as a side note right here, it sounds like I'm kind of rambling, but that is due to non-sleep and caffeine. This week in your Plex market report, we have seen Plex making steady gains as it inches its way up to 1.6 million per Plex. Currently the base price is 1.5 million per Plex. 
but within a day or two it will be hitting that 1.6. Now there has been a steady increase in price on planetary resources, so that is definitely one thing to keep an eye out for all you traders out there. We also learned that version 2 of the insurance program is set to release on the 21st, and these are the changes going forward. 1. Ships and blueprints with low market transaction volumes will use the cost of manufacturing materials to calculate the valuation instead, thus ensuring a more accurate and fair estimated market value. 2. Optimize the rules of insurance deposit pool required for the insurance system to produce new buy orders. ISK from overdue buy orders will now return to that deposit pool. Number three, reasons for specific items not being able to be claimed have been added to the insurance claims menu. Four, the recommended purchase value of the insurance points has been increased to 110% of the estimated value to avoid frequent reminders caused by market price fluctuations. Five, when receiving insufficient insurance points notification, a button to jump to the insurance point purchase menu has been added. They want us to know that they are hard at work in production of the insurance version 3 and they aim to release it sometime between August and September. They also want us to know that it's dependent on a specific structure they plan on adding to Corporation Citadels for this in addition to many other structures that they are currently designing. And again, any changes that they make or produce will be able to be spotted on their development roadmap on the Trello website. Now, before we get into the community news, first I would like to apologize for the severe delay in this video. We are still adjusting to life again with a newborn in the house, and sleep has been lacking, uh, pushing back all deadlines. Uh, this can also be viewed as a plus, as I was able to incorporate a lot more news in this episode. But, let's get into it. This week we witnessed the fall of another great empire within Echoes. I give you the death of the Golden Horde, at least this incarnation. The great space democracy experiment is now over with the mass exodus of players and corporations. I reported last week on the seven corps that have left the Golden Horde, and it was theorized they would not be the last. I contacted Zell, formerly of the Executive Council, to see how things turned so fast. I was told that Gregory Hurst, HTP's CEO, Agnes from JR, Shag Attack from Red One, Evil Darkness from IOP, and QB from Home initially tried to keep the Golden Horde together after Zell had stepped down from the executive leadership. However, this changed quickly as Heyu, one of uh, Golden Horde's admirals, Kaywin, the Golden Horde's lead diplomat, Red One, and Zan following Zell's departure out of the Golden Horde. Now after that happened, Evil Darkness stepped down, followed by Odin, Raid, Home, and so the dominoes began to fall. Gregory tried to stay on with the remaining Agnes from JR, but even his own corporation decided to leave as well to the Vale Coalition. This left only JR, Wrath, and Blood Horde to handle the Golden Horde. Unfortunately, it seems they will attempt to rebrand to something different. They are consolidating holdings and pulling in to stay within the catch. Zan Red One joined the Silent Alliance along with Evil Darkness who has formed a new corp, C4T Carpe Catus. That's right, Evil Darkness, the face of the Southern Coalition War, has actually dropped Golden Horde and formed a new corp under the Silent Alliance banner. This could spark a war between Genesis Pantheon and Silent. Uh, we will have to keep an eye down the road, but one could see that a war between Silent and Pantheon would be one of epic proportions. Zell has taken a good chunk of the Dark Horde elsewhere. This was Golden Horde's Gemini Alliance. I believe they have joined Pantheon. Now, I quote Zell saying, So, the Golden Horde is gone. Rest in peace. I am thankful for the time that I've had with everyone in the Golden Horde and the friendships and bonds we made, but I'm very happy to see it go. So many players are relieved to be free from the bureaucracy and work that is involved with managing a democracy of this scale. It was a fun experiment, but it's time for a new chapter. 
Okay, because Corp Citadels cannot be unanchored like outposts, Sparkfist, the CEO of DLG DIT and the executor of the Dark Horde, ran a contest on his Citadel Rage and Ruin called Who Wants to Be a Billionaire? The contest was set for 0200 UTC on the 4th. The Citadel was coming out of its whole timer and they were offering a fun bounty to have it destroyed. The bounty was for 1 billion in ISK and a T9 battleship for the runner up. There were rules however. The two main ones were frigs only and no attacking anyone during the event. The station was destroyed and the 1 billion ISK bounty was paid out to SG Pixel Rift. The runner up was Honk's own Kylo Ren and they are working on getting that battleship out to him. I am finally able to release a story that goes all the way back to November. Chris Wolf brought this to my attention back then and Honk and the devs and mods asked me to sit on this until it was all settled. Honk members were rewarded in game with a custom medal for discovering and bringing to the attention to the mods and devs a dupe bug that several large alliances were taking advantage of. And it is kind of fitting to release this now upon the fall of the Great Horde Empire as it was first observed by spies within the Golden Horde. They start to notice these odd stacking numbers of trit and other minerals and they notice that these stacks would happen every once in a while and this gave them the idea that this was a dupe and bug. That they cobbled together Isk to get a stack of 2.14 uh, billion uh, trit as soon as they hit that 2.14 they were able to dupe a second stack. They were told by NetEase that this was a visual bug at first, but then they split the stacks down and threw them into the delivery system from uh, Alakara to Jita to prove that it was not a visual bug. They suspected that this has been known since at least Tech Level 7. Back in Tech Level 7, every mineral except Tritanium um, went up by 50%. This bug occurred immediately upon getting a stack of 2.14 billion, which is an integer overflow error. They reported the bug, which was why stack all was disabled for a short time while the devs fixed this error. Chris Wolf said back in November, Personally, I'm basically done with this game. The market anomalies that everyone has blamed on botting appears to have been from duping. This was incredibly easy to replicate, just split a bunch of stacks, do the stack all, and voila, you have created billions worth in trit. Anyone big enough to acquire this amount of trit almost certainly figured it out. Excerpts from the video that's playing uh, were not taken from the Golden Horde, but instead was taken to recreate the bug and present it to the devs. OBI was one of the corps they had a spy in that saw the potentially duped stacks and showed a history going back at least two months before the discovery. There were other alliances that took part in this, however only Honk knows who they are and they have not released that intel. A link to this full story straight from Chris Wolf will be posted below. So everyone can now thank Honk not only for their S tier level memes and propaganda, but also for saving the game. The medal itself is very cool and it states that it's awarded to capsuleers who contributed to the normal functioning of New Eden. These capsuleers possess sharp eyes and a helpful, unselfish spirit. And since we are already talking about Honk, we must discuss this masterpiece released by Airbus this week. It contains a historic conspiracy chart of events since the launch of the game. However, that is not all this is. It is actually a ARG event puzzle. If you solve this puzzle and Honk sources inform me that no one has yet, it will lead you to another puzzle and then another. So to the community, follow the conspiracy fever dream to its next destination and I await the first one who can solve it. While more and more corps are flocking to the Sound Federation's banner and the war in the Southern Coalition stalled, Sound Federation takes down the last of the Firefly Corp Citadels in Tinal. 18.6 billion is killmail, and now with Fireflies in full retreat and the fall of the Horde, who knows if the war will continue on. In other silent news, a silent Rome has encountered a past enemy of theirs in OBS, now part of No, Please Stop. 
While playing tag, OBS took the fight and was able to get a Silent Macario down to 30% hull when its Logi ran out of cap. However, the Silent Forces wiped the 12 OBS ships from the grid and acknowledged the good fight that it was. We had April Fool's Day this past week and many got in on the jokes. No joining honk was a good one and many have contacted me that my made up event was an awesome concept and far better than the current egg hunt event which a lot of the community has issues with having to pay $5 worth of AUR to even get the second tier of rewards. This has been looked at with disdain as it follows other mobile games battle passes. However, most of us are already paying a subscription for the game each month and it seems like a cash grab. We are all hoping and us in the content creator section are begging the devs to release future events in the vein of the previous Halloween event, which incorporated PvP and more community interaction within the event itself. No Please Stop ran a frigate roam where they played Faction Cruiser Bingo, netting them four Cinnables, a Gila, an Ashimu, and a Phantasm. To cap out the roam, they did also net a, an Apocalypse kill as well as a 2.6 billion Megathon kill. Now, you cannot sweep on these frigate roams. Wherever we go, we bring out our traditional interceptor roams, now a permanent fixture here in OG. As the totals for our six roams have been, 75 billion is killed and only 4.9 billion lost. These fleets are always fun and fast and led by the infamous Weird Bob. Also, here is a shout out to Sun Banana, who has gone on record stating that I might possibly not be as biased as others may have thought. And another shout out to Dogo Dude, who thinks I am not truly the real Damon Zell. Since reopening the Corp and Alliance spotlights, I've been flooded by people wanting to participate. So I will have a few in this section since the, some of them are small ads. Our first Corp Alliance spotlight of the week is The Flock. Are you excited about the upcoming exploration features of Eve Echoes? Are you ready to make the eventual move to wormhole space? Are you one of those pilots who just can't wait to be flying in a Sisters of Eve ship, the Astero, the Stratios, or the Nestor, when they are released in this game? Then the flock may be the corporation for you. We are a new Eve Echoes corporation focused on exploration and PvE for mature players. Alts and Alphas are okay. Kindness, fellowship, consensus-driven decision-making, no jerks, no attitudes, and no salt. Just fun. To apply, contact Obaku or visit the Flock Discord where the um, link will be in the description below. Our next spotlight goes to Immortality, an old corporation with a new face. IMY has been here since the beginning. A part of Catch-22's large coalition, IMY is a corporation that believes heavily in teamwork and fostering members of all playstyles. IMY does industry, PvE, and PvP. We are a trifecta. If you are looking for a close-knit corporation that gives off a family vibe and caters to all playstyles, Immortality is the corporation for you. We stand together, we die together. Immortality is a part of Gravity Alliance, a roundtable-led alliance based 100% on teamwork and equality, truly different than the rest. To join them, or to ask any questions, contact Alun on Discord. His full Discord uh, ID will be in the description below. Also, Admiral Rentar wants people to know that Void are looking for 10 people a month to undergo training in all sectors and that they will be offering Omega to go with the training. Inner Alliance and fresh recruits are welcome, not so much as recruiting them into the corporate alliance, but to help them with training and skills so they can stand on their own two feet, and if they decide to leave or stay, it's whatever sparks their interest. Now, next week, we will be spotlighting Star Cats, so be sure to check it out. Before we get into the big kills of the week, I have noticed myself being stretched thin with time, especially with the new baby. 
Uh, I am looking to launch my news Discord within the next week, and will be looking for volunteers to help gather stories and write-ups for the show. If you are interested in being a reporter for the uh, front here, contact me via Discord. And now, the big kills of the week. Pew starts us off with these three large kills from a skirmish with Pantheon. We have a 11.7 billion Balgorn, a 15.9 billion Rattlesnake, and a 19.3 billion Nightmare. Silent Federation shows this week with a 12.2 billion Balgorn. Mimo Corp has this 3.9 billion Megatron, as well as some nice faction cruiser love, two Gilas, a fan, and a uh, Phantasm. Pantheon has this fantastic 12.7 billion Vindicator kill, a 10.4 billion Macarial, also a 3.7 billion Gila, a 2.2 billion Badger with Kyle Ren's help from Honk, and also a small Dami. We have this 4.4 billion Badger kill with a Capsular Outpost inside, but it did not drop. Some more Faction Cruiser love from the Veil vale Coalition, a 3.9 billion Phantasm kill. Soon also shows that they are still around with this 4 billion Isk Gila kill. And lastly, we have Genesis with some nice Faction kills, as well as two Gilas, one for 3.6 and the other for 3 billion. A Hurricane Lodgy for 1.4 and a Regular Cane for 1.2. But they capped the, off this roam with a 1.6 billion Draw Meal kill. I'm seeing a nice Faction Cruiser kill trend this week. Also, an honorable mention goes out to Zeppo, uh, because he's the first victim that won his loss shown, a 1.3 billion VNI. And it's time for everyone's favorite, the solo kills of the week, and a chance to win a free Omega combo. Alright, first up we have CNDL with a 1.155 billion succubus kill. We have Radical Clipper with this 1.55 billion isk daredevil kill. Next we have Shiroi Fox with a 1.8 billion cinnable kill. Zyklon comes in with a 1.9 billion daredevil kill. Kyojin Steiner nabs a 3.3 billion Gila kill. We have TikTok with this 9.7 billion Magnet kill. Badran, now eligible again, takes the first runner up spot with a 10.8 billion isk Macarial kill. And for the winner of this week and a free Omega combo, Sopa with this fantastic 15.9 billion isk Rattlesnake killed by an oracle those are some great kills of the week sopa get to with me on discord so i can get that prize out to you all right that does it for us this week however if you need more news in your life be sure to check out the echoes of new eden podcast with rambo with interviews with a bunch of community faces such as fcs alliance leaders corporation leaders those of the influential means all right everyone have a great week, have a great weekend, and remember we are always one vision, one purpose, one front.